is part of the Russell Group um, and it was established in 1876. Um, my fun fact here is that it is the first university um, in the UK that admitted men and women on equal footing straight from day one. That was one of our founding principles. Now, you might think that's not a big deal because, you know, you're not used to having that as an, an, an unusual thing. But if you consider that Oxford and Cambridge only introduced that in, I think, in 1910 and 1940, as a principal, you know, then you see how groundbreaking that actually is. We're linked to 13 Nobel Prize winners uh, and our current chancellor, Sir Paul Nurse, is in fact a Nobel Prize um, holder in medicine. So a substantial um, you know, academic accolade, of course. And there's about 200, sorry, 20,000 undergraduate students with us at the moment and 7,000 postgraduates. In between them, they have about 100 different nationalities, different languages, so it's a very cosmopolitan place. We're going to open a brand new campus as well, which is going to be a business and uh, quantum technology um, orientated uh, campus uh, in near the train station. So any new students coming on to undergraduate courses will certainly benefit from that. So I said the member of the prestigious Russell Group, if you're not sure what that is, do Google it. It's basically kind of the Ivy League, I said, in a sense, in the UK. And we're in the top 50 in the world as an uh, institution. So um, it is a, um, you know, a really, really good institution. I won't bore you with all the different, um, you know, facts here. Each of our faculties has different strengths. Um, if there's somebody out there who wants to study paleontology, to do with fossils, we're number one in the world, apparently. So, you know, there are all these different accolades to think about. So here we have the faculties. We have um, six faculties. Each of them has a number of schools. So you can see there's a wide representation here of anything you might want to study at undergraduate level. Um, I think the only glaring um, perhaps absence here would be that we don't do chemical engineering, but we do pretty much every other engineering that you might be interested in. The city itself, what can I tell you? It is absolutely beautiful. It's winning uh, all these accolades all the time. It's a very young city, very international city. Um, it's also the film, a UNESCO film city. So there's lots and lots going on and it's a beautiful thing, a beautiful place to be. So for here example, we have a, a city center campus. So our campus is interwoven with the very city center. Many of the buildings are ours. Of course, they are not open to the public, but they're within the public sphere. And you never feel like you're outside, shut away on a, on a campus, uh, kind of on your own. So this one here at night, Park Street, is basically the main artery through um, the city center, but also our campus itself. Now, when you are here, you will see there's a whole support system in place. This is a feature of the UK. If you're studying in the UK, there's a lot of support available to you. For a start, there's peer mentoring where you will be teamed up with people um, who are studying similar things or the same things, so you can support each other. But we have counseling services, well-being services. We have funding offices that will you know, help you if you're running into financial difficulties. And every student gets a personal tutor. So that is the person you, know, you can chat to and make appointments uh, with um, about anything. It doesn't have to be your academic study. Often they're not your actual academic because you, know, you need somebody senior in the institution you, know, you can talk to without perhaps talking to somebody who teaches you as well. There's a whole health service. We have a fabulous... Uh, medical school and the hospitals in town are basically part of our teaching um, facilities and we have our own um, GP surgery so that means you don't have to wait for the public in line for appointments you know you are treated separately as our student body there's well-being advisors um, there's a lot of support in the residences so what you might call <clears throat> dormitories or halls we tend to call residences um, you know so where you are living there will also be somebody there to support you and we have a global lounge which is all to do with welcoming you into you know our lives we also support our students with scholarships now this is not for uh, students who are joining us in 2020 you would already know if you had one because we had already um, awarded that we have awarded them but it's interesting to note that we actually give a million pounds in scholarships for international students only um, now what happens when you apply you apply through UCAS so hopefully you already know a little bit about UCAS but if not Please put your questions in and um, we'll try and answer them. But basically, um, you know, it is, it is a very um, 
measured approach. Um, everybody's treated fairly. Now this year, of course, with the COVID crisis, everything is a little bit different um, and we are uh, being allowed to be a bit more lenient. We are going to go into a clearing phase. We can, um, you know, look at alternative up, um, sort of um, qualifications as well, as, as I've already mentioned. Now, when you've applied, you apply to up to five institutions, as you know, and you will hopefully receive five offers. Um, you then have to make a choice. Out of those, you can take only two forward. I had a, a long conversation with a student from India the other day who didn't quite know why that was. But the thing is, you can't forever hold on to five offers. Every university has to fill their places. If everybody holds on five offers, then nobody can actually be placed in the end. So you carry on with two one would be your firm acceptance, that's number one, plan A, when you get your results, or if your teacher predicts the right results that we want, um, then you're in. Um, and then one is an insurance choice, that should be lower, because that's like your backup, plan B, if I don't get results, or if I can't get, you know, my teacher to predict what in this particular year, what I might be getting, um, you know, then you are uh, not left out in the cold. You've got an insurance choice. The universities in the UK adhere to strict quality control. So you don't really find particularly bad ones or, you know, ones that you can't trust. They're all really good universities, but I would say that one like Bristol in the Russell group, we do kind of, you know, lead the way in terms of teaching and research. The next big thing on your mind might be accommodation. Now we can guarantee you accommodation um, to, you know, if, you, if you're new to us, if this is your first time studying with us, we will guarantee that you can have accommodation with us. Um, for undergrads, that's usually just in the first year. It's a completely normal thing to move on with your newfound friends. Uh, after you run into you know, other accommodation in town and there's plenty of that available. We can offer you different types of rooms. There's something for everybody. You can choose to be just with um, your own uh, gender or not. You know, uh, some students come with families, probably not for undergraduate, but you know, it could happen. So a lot of choices there for you. This is, if you remember, you saw early on, I was talking about the city center campus and the blue blue um, colored in bit here, that is the campus. It's also the city center. And then here is the uh, waterway that goes out to the sea. Um, and this is the Wills building I mentioned earlier where you will graduate. So when you're here in this blue bit, you can see all these different residences. So they're grouped into villages. They're not real villages. Yeah, this is a city. You're not out in the sticks. There's not villages, but they're grouping them into areas where you would live. So all of these different um, little houses here correspond to the residences there. So you can see already there's a lot of choice um, there. You can usually choose between, um, you know, having your own bathroom or not, sharing uh, the kitchen or having a studio uh, or um, even having catered options uh, uh, as well. So there's lots and lots of different choices, all different, of course, in terms of um, price level. Like these two students here, if you are especially in, in your dancing skills or you're a musician and you wanna, you wanna show that off when you're in the UK, in the institution, um, then make sure you bring all the stuff or get it sent over that you need. Um, about 200 people went to visit to see these two dancers and it was absolutely amazing. Every university has in the UK a student's union. Ours is one of the best and I learned this morning that our physics, um, uh, Students' Union Society, which is aptly named CHAOS, um, is, uh, has been voted the best Students' Union Society in the UK. I mean, that's amazing. Didn't know that because the physicists are really quite modest people. But, you know, that there it is. But you can do loads of different things. There are lots of Indian-themed um, societies, but also food or sport or, you know, volunteering or any kind of thing you might think of. And if you can't find it, then you can found your own society as well. What kind of a community is it and, and, and what kind of a student would really thrive at Bristol and do well? Well, um, the sort of student who thrives is, is somebody who plunges right in, um, you know, um, because uh, you have so many opportunities when you are there. And I have to say, you know, I've been doing international recruitment and admissions for many years. Um, and I have to say the Indian students are actually very, very good as a, as a national grouping. They're not retiring. There are other nationalities that are a little bit more timid in their social interactions, but that's not, that's usually not the case with uh, our, the Indian students that I have met for sure. Uh, and certainly at the university 
of Bristol. So, you know, it doesn't, you don't have to be sporty. You don't have to be arty, but you, if you have an appetite for in, engaging in things and making the most of this opportunity of these three or four, sometimes five years um, being there, um, that's the right student. We like our students to be a little bit, um, yeah, and again, I have to say, Indian students on the whole are pretty good at this. So for those students, there's a network of support available. So we have, for example, campus security. Um, you know, there are people who are make, checking on everybody every day if you're living on campus. Most, most of the postgrads would live on campus. Then there are WhatsApp groups, keeping each other informed, saying, you know, what, how are you doing? Um, the, all the well-being services are still open. You just can't go there, but they keep an eye on, on, on the students. And, and, you know, if there were any problems, they would be able to react to it. It's not a campus...